Betamax ultra dependable high speed hoists generate immediate gains in productivity and profit for our customers. But don't take my word for it. Contractors and subs consistently report 15 to 30 percent productivity gains using Betamax hoists and with return on investments measured in weeks not months or years it's an easy sell for our dealers. Betamax manufactures three product lines that solve three unique problems. Portable wire rope hoist that you can set up just about anywhere. Our versatile line of rack and pinion hoists. And our Betamax Maxial Track scaffold hoist. What makes Betamax wire rope hoist so profitable is the speed at which they move, up to 80 feet per minute faster than winches and safer than rope and pulleys. They get the job done at less cost than renting cranes and lulls. Their flexible mounting options allow you to set them up just about anywhere on I-beams, on scaffold, work platforms, or standalone. Recently, glass installer Benson Industries used four Betamax hoists with soft start and stop technology to install thousands of glass panels on World Trade Center Towers 1 and 4. The soft start and stop technology protects the glass panels from breakage by providing smooth acceleration and deceleration and increased production for Benson by 30 percent. You can see video of the setup in action at Betamaxhoist.com slash glazing. Need an overview of our wire rope hoist line? Go to our website, Betamaxhoist.com, then scroll down and click on High Speed Electrical Wire Rope Hoist. You'll see a page that describes each hoist and allows you to click on a specific model to get further details. Download specs, see the specific mounting options available for that hoist and more. You can always click the Wire Rope Hoist link to get back to the overview page. There's also a general specification table which will help you select the right hoist for your customer's project or your project. Free up your work crews and remove delivery bottlenecks with small footprint rack and pinion hoists. Betamax offers material hoists, personnel hoists, and transport platforms specific to your project needs. Our most popular rack and pinion model is the Max Climber 3000-4000 TP. Flexible enough to haul 12 foot drywall, a crew of 7 passengers, or even a cube of brick and all at a price point you can't find for a man of material delivery system anywhere else. Get specs and details on our website by clicking Rack and Pinion Hoist in the top menu bar. Betamax Maxial Track Scaffold Hoists are truly a game changer with their simple design that builds with your scaffolding, providing a fast, continuous supply of material to your crew. Check out the case study video on our site that documents a scaffold erection project that finished 30% faster with 70% less labor. The Maxial Track Scaffold Hoist generated an extra $250,000 in profit for our customer on that one job alone. The results speak for themselves. Just click scaffolding on the main page of our site and scroll down to find the video. If you have any questions on our products, or need help designing the most profitable setup for a specific project, give us a call.
what I'm doing is uh, I have a maintenance contract at several of the AEP power plants, and the boiler work is involved in that. And the case we're talking about right now is I'm doing a job at a 1,300 megawatt plant. Uh, we need a full boiler scaffold, perimeter decking, headache deck at the bull nose, and scaffolding in the superheat. The old way of doing it is you take a man line. I'll have uh, basically 20 decks of scaffolding every six foot six inches perimeter throughout the boiler. The boiler's so big at 120 feet, I divide that and work off of each end. So each time I add a deck, I add a man in a pass line. Where we're looking at uh, you know 20 decks, I'm looking at 20 men just from the time I'm at the throat till I get to my headache deck. By using the max seal hoist, I pass my material in to the bottom. I eliminate my man lines. So each time I go up, instead of adding a man, my manpower stays the same. Without the max seals, I will use roughly 20 men per line additional, just for the passing line. However many lifts I have, let's say there's 20 lifts, and I'm doing it two times, that's 40 additional men that I have to have on site to move the material up and down that the hoist takes the place of. But what it does is, first of all, my exposure to liability of someone getting hurt is reduced dramatically. You know, I'm, I'm eliminating 40 men that's going to be passing material hand over hand 10 hours a day for 10 shifts to build it. The biggest thing is just the safety factor. I no longer have 40 sets of arms pumping material all day. And instead, I'm replacing them with this mechanical force that cuts out that liability and exposure. Uh, there's a roughly 18 to 20,000 pieces of material that goes into a 1300 megawatt boiler. So, you know, you figured out yourself, the, you know, the, the risk of dropping one of those pieces. When you have 20 people, or 40 people, I'm sorry, two lines of 20, handling 10,000 pieces each. You know, human error will come into play here at some point. It's proved out. In scaffolding, the biggest majority of, if I go back on my history, the most accidents I will have will be on a boiler situation. You know, 50 to 75% of them is going to be boiler specific accidents. So I've eliminated those accidents to the point, something that we're very proud of as a company is my EMR rating is 0.58. For a scaffold company, that's unbelievable to have a 0.58. And a lot of that we contribute back to, all right, most of your accidents are in boilers. We have eliminated the probability of that accident by doing away with those people in that boiler. And that 0.58 puts me in a much better light with the customer, especially that doesn't know me, that's saying, hey, this guy's safe. So, you know, we contribute that safety back to that max seal. So the max seal has pretty much become a, you know, a very important piece of our equipment in boilers. Uh, this, this last case, this boiler we just did, I was having trouble getting a hoist. My superintendent was in an absolute panic. The thought of being able to do a boiler without a hoist now doesn't cross their mind. Before it was, there's no other way of doing it but hand over hand, extra men. Now they're to the point they see the benefits of it that it's like, you know, whatever you got to do, get these hoists. We don't care. We can't do it without them. A hard dollar bid, and I have to look at this and give them a lump sum price. If I do not have the max seal, I would have to figure in that pass line of an additional 30 to 40 men labor that I would have to pass on to the customer. Using the max seal hoist, I don't have to figure with that extra labor. It's taking all the middle labor out. Therefore, I can be more competitive on my contract numbers because I don't require the manpower labor that I would doing it the old conventional way. The manpower and the limits to exposure, you know, for accidents and things, how do you put a price on that? You're reducing manpower, so you're re reducing liability. I've transitioned this outside of a boiler. I've did some walls, like re-insulating walls or, you know, for insulators, big precipitators, things like that. I'll put a max seal up there. Same thing, if you're up 10 to 12 lifts high, well, I need two guys on top and three on the bottom. I don't need that man line. 
I don't need that rope and wheel, somebody pulling all day long. My production goes up. The Max Seal has never taken a bathroom break or stepped out of line because they got dirt in their eye or needed a drink. Hey, this is Bar Pair here on the Betamax Test Tower, testing out the 2,000 PMB personnel hoist. The reason contractors choose this seven-person, 2,000-pound hoist is because it saves them thousands of dollars in monthly rental and operation costs compared to a 6,000-pound hoist. Most projects don't need to transport 22 people at a time. Think about it. You wouldn't pay extra to send a postcard LTL freight, which it just doesn't make sense. Paying for that extra capacity of a 6,000 plus pound hoist, you're just wasting your money. And most contractors I know do not like to waste money. They do like hoists that run on 208 three phase power, though. They also like hoists that can be attached to scaffolding, can be erected without a crane, and have tie in and pull out forces that are a fraction of a 6,000 pound hoist. 2000 PMB is ideal for restoration projects or anywhere you're installing a car inside a building, say in an elevator shaft or otherwhere where you've got tight spaces. Go online and check out the specs or give us a call today. It was uh, 152 apartments on a podium, uh, four stories of wood frame. The podium was roughly 30 feet high, and it was a, a unique job because getting material in and out of the building had to go through another builder's site, per se. So we reached out to get this hoist, thinking we had a small corner of a sidewalk that we could place this thing between the building and a city street. Uh, the small footprint, we were able to drop it on the sidewalk didn't take up much space. We didn't have to access the site because we were loading right off the street. With the wood frame structure, it was tough to, initially, we were going back and forth with our engineer to figure out how to attach a hoist to the side of the building. Originally, we had looked at hoists with higher capacities, and like I said earlier, the engineers were coming up with some pretty crazy attachment deals where we would have to tear drywall down inside, um, sister to new joists to allow tiebacks to connect further into the building. So we, uh, we called Safeway to determine what the best fit for our job was, and they brought the Betamax hoist to us um, with the lesser tieback um, forces. We were able to actually just lag bolt directly to a six inch thick LVL that was part of our band board system and at all the natural connections inside the building to the trusses and to the walls above and below were enough to sustain the required forces. And their, their install was awesome, to say the least. They were safe and uh, cautious of their surroundings, cautious of the building. Just, it was a day up and a day down. We, we figured two days up, two days down, and they were in and out before, before we knew it. Well, they couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> they, um, they, they were appreciative of it because it was simple for them to use. It was really one guy on the ground with the remote and, and one guy helping him load the material on the ground and then maybe one guy upstairs unloading. So it, it minimized their labor costs 
to actually get material in and out of the building because it didn't require 10 guys carrying things up and down stairs or, or in and out of the building to get it to its interior elevator. Um, as the horse was going away, it was actually very easy to put the building back together. There was no remedial work after we removed the hoist. Um, there was only four connections or five connections, I think, going up the side of the building. And the, the skin of the building was hardy panel. So it was simple enough to just, I think, four hours worth of work, pop four hardy panels back in where they were supposed to go, talk them in, done. And the, uh, the four balconies, we just put the four railings on and we were out. I'm already pushing for them to include a budget line for a similar material hoist on anything we have that's a single building or maybe two buildings that are, that are taller than usual or any kind of tight site.